The next tips are for anyone moving or planning to move between countries not that similar. The German firm Archer Relocation designed an expat adjustment curve, which has six steps. The honeymoon phase, the initial culture shock, the superficial adjustment, the culture shock, the recovery, and finally the integration, the last one. And whoever reaches the integration overcome the culture shock and recover to run their show in their new life. And as much as achieving this stage of adaptation is a brilliant victory, there are different levels of it. We can break down the concept of integration into four different types. However, before we begin, I would like to ask a small favor. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button so that YouTube can continue to show it to others. And now, time for the four types of immigrant integration. There is the economic integration. It's when foreigners work and generate wealth for themselves via their salaries and profits and to their new country by paying taxes. They add their contribution both the supply by their products and demand by their consumption. The social integration, which happens when people mingle with the locals, adopt the social codes of the new country and its death kit. And although personal efforts to achieve social integration are important, how fast you achieve depends also on how friendly is the population. The Porto Internation researched a similar subject and concluded that in places like Mexico, Costa Rica, Ecuador or Colombia, creating a social circle can be much easier than in Nordic countries or Saudi Arabia. Then there is the cultural integration. This kind of integration is when people adopt the habits and culture of the new place. To reach a full cultural integration, it's indispensable to have a good understanding of the local language and go across all its components, music, literature, beliefs or celebrations. Cultural integration can be even harder than social integration if your original country and the new one are from different civilizational foundations, for example India and Eastern Europe. Then there is the emotional integration. And this is the last type on the list for a reason, it's the hardest. And there is a word in my native language, Portuguese, called saudade. The term is almost untranslatable, but fits very well to describe uh, emotional integration. Saudade can be defined as the presence of absence, the yearning for something or someone that right now is unreachable and whose absence creates a void in your inner self. Saudade is not only missing and does not have a completely negative meaning because it brings sadness and joy together. It is, as deciphered by older generations, the love that remains. We can translate uh, emotional integration, at least partially, as loving your new country and shaping your personality by its influences. The fully integrated, however, will go beyond this and not feel any saudade from his origins. If you're already living abroad for some time, you probably are thinking about how far you are in those four different dimensions. The good news is that you don't need to achieve all of them. When I moved to Chile, I was very well integrated economically, socially and culturally. I didn't need to do much effort since they are close to Brazil in all those components. And here, similarity plays a big role. When I moved to Poland, for me to reach the same level of assimilation from Chile, it took much longer. And while I live in Qatar, well, I achieved economic integration, but the social and cultural aspects were very distant from my daily life. And what about emotional integration? Even though I had part of my personality changed by every country that I live in, my core is still the same, and it's Brazilian. And well, maybe I will always feel saudade of the southeastern plains of Brazil. And this is fine. If that was the rule when you are a first generation immigrant. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel for the next ones.